Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Yuan Kai from Magia University. Uh, I am a postdoc in Nijun School. So today's topic is about graph neural networks for uh, for real time spatial temporal correction. So this uh, this was a published paper in this year's Triple AI conference, and my research was supported by the uh, Iwadu postdoc fellowship. I really appreciate that. So uh, this is the outline of today's presentation. So in the first part, I will briefly introduce the background and uh, the motivation of uh, why we develop a graph neural networks for correcting problem. And in the second part, the methodology, the graph neural networks and how we train the neural networks. And uh, we also conduct several experiments on, uh, on various data sites. And finally, the conclusion on the future work. So uh, for spatial temporal data analysis, uh, we have two important tasks. The first one is uh, forecasting. Uh, it's about how to use uh, historical information to forecast the future information. So actually, this task has been well addressed by the machine learning communities. Uh, we already have uh, uh, many powerful deep learning framework and we have many open source data sets. Uh, but for the second task, correcting, uh, which has been paid nice attention, uh, it's about how to perform interpolation for unsampled locations. Uh, here in this example, uh, we have observations from uh, location two to location nine. So our task is to, uh, is to estimate the information in location 10 and 11. Uh, this is very important in many applications. Uh, because uh, in uh, in real world we uh, we may interested in the state of some locations, but it is prohibited to uh, locate sensors in those locations. So today's topic is about smart cities. I believe that uh, the correction uh, has many applications in smart cities. Uh, let's take the transportation system as an example. Uh, in in some applications, uh, we are interested to uh, info the whole state of the uh, those networks of uh, one city. But uh, in many cases, we only have limited number of sensors. Here in this example, uh, we, we, only have, uh, we only have very limited sensors, uh, which is sparsely uh, located in, uh, in, the, in the locations with black stars. Uh, so if we have some interpolation method that can info the information, uh, info the information of the whole load networks, the traffic state of the whole load networks based on the uh, based on the information reported by the uh, location of the black stars, and uh, that will be definitely helpful. So, so here is one example for the special temporal correction. Uh, I believe that we we have many applications in other areas. So, uh, for correction, we already have some traditional methods. Uh, to name a few, uh, we have Gaussian process, GP, and the uh, matrix uh, tensor compilations. But in my opinion, they, they have two problems. Uh, the first one, I think for, for the matrix compilation, uh, the problem is that they are essentially transductive. Uh, so it means that if we, uh, if we have timely readings, we, or we have a new sensor, here we have a new sensor at, uh, at location nine. So in that case, uh, if you use a matrix completion method, uh, you have to retrain your model. And that is not very convenient uh, because uh, in many applications, we have mobile sensors. The mobile sensor has random locations. Uh, and uh, also we have some uh, flexible sensors, sensors. It can appear in some time, disappear in some time. So uh, this is not good if you use a transductive method. And uh, we also know that GP cannot effectively deal with large scale data sets. So, and uh, from, uh, from my readings, uh, uh, we know that graph neural networks, it is inductive, uh, it is not transductive, and uh, it can deal with, it can generalize to large scale data sets. Uh, that's the reason why we choose uh, graph neural networks to, uh, to address the correcting task. So, uh, so the idea is quite simple. Uh, we uh, the problem here is that uh, during a time period we have we have observations uh, in a, uh, in in some locations 
those locations will form a graph. And, uh, and during the uh, test time, uh, we, we must use uh, observations in, in this graph to info some information uh, in the unsampled locations or mask locations. So uh, we, uh, to, to train a, such a model can, uh, can solve this problem, uh, we propose a very simple method. Uh, so here we have, uh, uh, we have in the training time, uh, we have a training graph. Uh, we just randomly sample some random subgraph structures. And we randomly, uh, we randomly mask some information of this graph. And we train a, a graph neural networks to reconstruct uh, this graph. After that, we found that uh, the trained graph neural networks can be generalized to uncertain graphs or even an entirely new network structure. So uh, this is the basic idea of this work. So for the algorithm, I, uh, I will not go, go deep into it, but it is quite simple. The first step is uh, we just randomly sample a subset of the, uh, as I said, I just, we, we just randomly sample a subset from, uh, from this graph structure, uh, from the, those data size. And uh, after that, because uh, we have the location of, uh, of this subgraph, uh, we can construct uh, adjacent matrix according to the uh, special dependence, a uh, special relationship between those locations. And after that, we mask some, uh, we mask some information in this subgraph. And then finally, we train a graph neural networks to reconstruct the uh, sample graph segment. So for the network structure, uh, we, some, something we, we should consider it is that uh, for some applications, uh, in my field, for example, the transportation uh, system, uh, we have a symmetric distance matrix. So symmetric means that uh, uh, in, a, in a road, uh, a vehicle can only, uh, uh, can only travel from upstream to the down, to downstream. So in the forward pass, uh, the upstream is collected to the downstream location. But in the backward, uh, in the backward direction, the uh, the downstream is not corrected to the upstream locations. So here we have two adjacent matrix uh, in order to model the orthometric distance matrix. Uh, so we we have two adjacent matrix in the graph neural networks, and uh, uh, this is a basic uh, autoencoder structure. We just input a, a graph with uh, with uh, with mask. And then we train a graph neural network, a three-layer graph neural network to reconstruct the graph. And uh, uh, something was noticed here is that uh, we not only reconstruct the information with mask, uh, we also construct the whole graph. So uh, we found in the experiments that this is uh, better for our graph neural networks. The performance will be uh, better if we reconstruct all the graph. So the learning objective is to uh, is to reconstruct the all the all the sample the graph all the loaders in the sample graph. Uh, so let's let's talk about the experiments. So uh, in the experiments, we compare our method with several baselines, and we uh, evaluate our methods on uh, on several different data sites. Uh, here, Meta RA is a uh, open source uh, traffic data size. Seattle data size is a uh, traffic. Uh, traffic speed data size. Unreal is about solar energy, and the USHCN is uh, uh, precipitation of the of the United States. And uh, for all those uh, experiments, we just randomly discard some uh, some locations, and we use them as uh, uh, test data size. And we compare the IGNK, the graph neural networks method, uh, with other baselines, with k nearest label, with KPMF. Uh, KPMF is a, uh, is a matrix factorization method based on Gaussian process and the tensor compilation method, GLTR. And the ordinary correction, uh, uh, it is a very traditional uh, uh, correction method. And in all those cases, we found that uh, the graph neural networks uh, is better than other baselines. So we also want to um, compile, uh, compile the the method of we, how we construct the adjacent matrix. So for special data analysis, we know that distance uh, is very important. Here we, here in, in, uh, in this table, uh, 
for meta array unreal, you are such uh, their adjacent metrics are constructed by the distance, uh, by the distance between two locations. But for Seattle data set, uh, we, we, we use uh, labelhood. If two uh, locations are, uh, are labels, they, uh, the corresponding adjacent, uh, the corresponding value of the adjacent metrics uh, will be one, otherwise it will be zero. Uh, so uh, we also con conduct a comparison between uh, those two adjacent metrics. And we want to, uh, as I said, uh, we want to evaluate uh, whether our map our model can be transferred to a new uh, to a new uh, data site. So here we, we have meta RA, it is traffic speed data site, and the Seattle data, it is also a traffic speed data site. And we use another data site, uh, it is uh, also a speed data site. And we directly applied the model uh, trained on meta RA and the Seattle data site. And we directly apply it to the PERMS data site to say the performance of on the collision for PERMS data set. So you, as you can see, we found that uh, the model transferred from meta array, uh, it is trained by the, uh, we call Gaussian kernel uh, here. It, uh, it is dependent on the distance between two locations. Uh, we can find that uh, the IGNK transferred from uh, meta array outperforms the other data set. And the all models, if we train it uh, based on the uh, distance metrics, uh, Based on the Gaussian kernels, you will find that uh, the uh, uh, the all those method will uh, will obtain a better performance. So uh, this results uh, shows that uh, for uh, for collision task, uh, it is very important to use uh, distance information. So, but uh, as you know, in in uh, traditional uh, in general graph neural networks task. Uh, most of the application just use the labelhood to define the, uh, the to define the adjacent metrics. So we also uh, visualize the performance of the uh, of the transfer learning performance. Uh, as you can see, the uh, e except the extreme congestion period, uh, all this model is closer uh, is close to the ground truth. So we also visualize the. Uh, uh, special uh, the creation performance in the special dimension. As you can see here, we have a uh, uh, extreme congestion in uh, in this ensemble locations. Only IGNK can rep uh, replicate this uh, uh, re replicate this uh, extreme congestion information. Or uh, the K nearest label, the GRO TRO, uh, fail to provide uh, those in, uh, fail to pro. Um, accurately estimate the information. So, so we can see that IGNK uh, uh, is better uh, at this example. And, uh, and also we, we can also have other uh, applications uh, because all those, uh, all those uh, collision is based on the uh, distance uh, between uh, different locations. So we can insert a virtual sensors uh, between, div uh, between two sensors. And uh, uh, we can use IGNK to uh, produce uh, uh, interpolation method. Here we, we give two examples. Uh, one is uh, one is the traffic speed between two sensors, two adjacent sensors. We just watch, uh, we just uh, insert uh, in exhaust virtual sensors uh, between two uh, two real world sensors, and we can see that uh, um, uh, the IGNK just produce. Uh, uh, produce the values according to the distance information and the real values of these surrounding sensors. Here we have uh, uh, we have uh, we have no uh, pre precipitation in uh, in this example. Uh, so so, so sensor, sorry. Yeah. So so, yeah. so sorry. If you want some uh, some time for questions, um, you you have oh. like one more minute to conclude. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? We, Perfect. Just one more minute. Yes, it's okay. So uh, for more information, you can refer to my GitHub and the code is, pro uh, is provided. Now we are also continue uh, searching for more powerful graph neural networks. So my re our recent works, uh, it is, uh, it's better to capture the temporal dependence and the uh, missing data issue has been well addressed. So all those information are put on archive and the GitHub. So in the future, we want to uh, perform probability modeling and the core collision 
and the multivariate data sets. And, uh, uh, thank you. And that's all for my presentation.